Hello, Cherie Hansen here. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and view my video. I really appreciate it. I would ask that you like and um, subscribe. If you have someone that you think would benefit from <clears throat> my musings, uh, just uh, volleyball it over the net to them. That would be great. Today, um, in meditation, I was looking at the concept of time, what time has meant to me in my life. One of the things I know for sure is everything is a relationship. My ego to my sense of identity is a relationship. Uh, my way of dealing with my body is because of the relationship I have with my body. Uh, do I fully take care of it and love it and care for it? And if so, then my body thrives. <laughs> and then, as in all good relationships, there's a flow. There is a cause and effect. There is growth. There is calmness. There is a sense of security that comes from that. So I was thinking about how I have had a really conflict-ridden relationship with time. Early on in my life, I was work addicted. So I walked around all of my life, everything, all day, from one task to another task, 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 task. And because of that, I was living in a place called collapsed time, scarcity time, poverty time. There is not enough time. And what that comes from basically is there's not enough me. I'm not enough. I'm not strong enough, powerful enough, clever enough, quick enough uh, to deal with everything. And now the everything is the interesting part. Everything is what my mind lands on. I look around me and I think I should do this, I should do that, there's this, there's that, there's the other thing. And it's a mind habit to burden myself with too many tasks, too many goals, too many distractions in order to achieve any of them. And as I was sitting there thinking about this, this very tense, uh, anxiety-ridden relationship I have had with time in my life, I remember when a time opened up. There are, there are occasions in my life that have been like a flowering. You know those feelings where you get when you're standing by the ocean or when you're standing in a breeze or when you're walking alone at night and you feel like everything is perfection and there's nothing more that is needed. You are this soft, big, expansive field of love. And that's all you are. There is no time. There is no task. There is no sense of self that is hard and and uh, frightened and, you know, militant. And I remember one of those occasions was when I was sitting in uh, the Western Washington Library. I used to go there all the time. It was my, it was my environment, um, especially times when other people were social, <laughs> you know. They'd go out, they'd be at a coffee shop, there'd be some big event happening, and I would head straight to the library because I knew that it would be empty. The high ceilings would have light coming in from the side, and it would be quiet, and it would be peaceful. 
And I would pick up a book at random and sit down and read it. And I very often just let happenstance direct me to my reading. And it's always served me well. I came across Henri Bergson at that time. And I'm sitting there reading Bergson's book about the two realities of time. One is the objective reality on your watch, uh, you know, that's shared with other people. Right now is 11. Everybody has got 11. And then he went on to talk about the subjective reality of time, which was about duration. And I felt so good. I'm sitting there and I'm going, this time of sitting here reading about time is timeless. I'm floating. I am eternal. I am this, this mind floating in eternity and learning something that I already knew, but now I know, no. Um, one of the books I read was Tompkins' Adventures in Wonderland in the 60s, which was a child's book about relativity. So I had, I've been on this path all my life. Uh, you know, other people are maybe building skills at this or that or the other thing. For me, what I have been doing as long as I can remember is exploring the nature of my reality. What is it? What am I saying to myself? What am I doing? How am I creating my world? And this is what led me to meditation practice. When I was 20 years old, I found a book on a shelf about Buddhism. And ever since then, I have been so deeply grateful for everything I've been able to uh, pick up about Buddhism, and it has helped me so much in my spiritual growth. And now I'm looking at the next lesson, which is my relationship with time. What is it? Is this day spreading out in front of me vast? Or is it uh, walking through a crowd <coughs> in New York City, <laughs> Times Square on New Year's Eve, <laughs> like this? Um, so I, I really starting to focus in on the idea that I am creating my relationship with time. And I look back at it and I think, I've been in a war with myself about this. So what I have to say today, what I think is, is the theme um, that I'm bringing to you today is that everything in our life is about a relationship. How do you relate to yourself? How do you relate to your body? How do you relate to time? How do you relate to your ego? And that is where we start from. So you kind of need a marriage counselor <laughs> or <coughs> the ability to sit down, meditate, take in a breath, fill the body with air, and be curious. Like, what is the story that I am making up about my life? And that is where we get to. I am creating my life. I am like a spider spinning a web. And in order to understand what reality I'm creating, I have to understand my relationship to these various aspects of being alive. And that is why I am so grateful for Buddhism, because Buddhists 
knew this. <laughs> they knew this early on. And it really helps us when we're stepping into the new reality on the face of the earth. Who am I? What is my relationship to my body? What is my relationship to my soul? What is my relationship to spirit? What is my relationship to food, to time, to clothing, to other people? Just look at those things. Really look at them. And now what you're doing is you're becoming a person who has <clears throat> agency. You have agency. You're not blind. You're not like a mole underground just digging and digging and digging. And why am I digging? Because everybody else is digging. And then that's when you become real. Like the Velveteen Rabbit or like Pinocchio. <laughs> you know, that's when you become who you really are is when you understand these things. Thank you so much. I am having workshops in my house, uh, a series of workshops. Uh, get a hold of me if you're in the Kelowna area. Um, it's going to be limited size because, you know, it's not a, a vast collection of people. It is a small, intimate group that so we can share and we feel safe and supported by one another. Please do like and subscribe to my video. Thank you so much for watching today.